Give me liberty and give me a net. Welcome to Annette on Life, Liberty, and Happiness, a podcast where I talk about the Constitution, politics, history, and pretty much anything else I want to talk about. And since we are sitting here at the end of 2020, a banner year, a dumpster fire of a year, um, I wanted to uh, go over a few of the things that happened this year, um, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And then I wanted to share a few stories from people who said that 2020 was awesome. I know, what? Awesome? Now, while it was a really difficult year in a lot of ways, there were lots of great things that happened. And so I want to take you over a few things that happened nationally and then read a few of these stories that people shared with me on Facebook and through email. And if you want to become my friend on Facebook, um, you can either go to my uh, Annette Talks Facebook page or to my personal page, uh, Annette Mashler Bybee. B-Y-B-E-E. Anyway, so, you know, I, I think for a lot of us, me included, um, when I think of 2020, I mostly think of the dreaded virus, the lockdowns, the masks, um, and the election, and um, and basically just feel like I was <laughs> put upon all year long. And so there are actually a lot of things that happened as I was looking over um, CNN Fast Facts, I think it was called. Um, there were a lot of things that happened that I had actually forgotten about because every, everything seemed to be clouded or overridden uh, by COVID. So I'm just going to go, instead of reading like whole sentences, I'm just going to throw out keywords and it'll cast your mind back to some things that we may have already forgotten about. And um, then I'll look at these fun stories and we'll end on a high note. All right, so just to take us back um, through January, we start in January. Um, Impeachment, uh, coronavirus, Kobe Bryant, travel ban, Trump acquitted, first COVID-19 death, Jesse Smollett indicted, Roger Stone sentenced, Harvey Weinstein found guilty. Breonna Taylor fatally shot. Oh, now we're in March, FYI. Biden picks female running rate running mate. CDC recommends to cancel or postpone large events. Trump announces. U.S.-Canadian border closing. Trump announces FDA looking at hydrochloroquine. Trump wants to reopen country by Easter. That seems really funny now, doesn't it? Two trillion dollar stimulus package. Dow records worst start to a year in history. Obama endorses Biden. Eric Garcetti says no concerts or sporting events in LA until 2021. New York City deliberately shuts down the entire subway system for cleaning. Actress Lori Laughlin, George Floyd, 100,000 coronavirus related deaths in the United States. SpaceX launches two NASA astronauts. NASCAR bans the flag, the Confederate flag. Rayshard Brooks fatally shot by Garrett, Garrett Rolfe. Supreme Court gives um, LGBT rights from the uh, Civil Rights Act of 1964. Ghislaine Maxwell arrested and charged. I think that's how you say her name. Or maybe it's Ghislaine. I don't know. Trump, Mount Rushmore, July 4th. Trump announces formal withdrawal from the WHO. Trump grants clemency to Roger Stone. Uh, 
uh, Redskins name and logo changed. MLB shortened season. NBA resumes season. Trump signs executive order for coronavirus relief. Biden announces Kamala Harris as running mate. Trump opposes funding for this postal service. August complex fire begins in Northern California. DNC kicks off with a two hour virtual event. Trump pardoned Susan B. Anthony. The National Susan B. Anthony Museum and House declines his pardon. I didn't know about that until I read this. Uh, Harris accepts the vice presidential nomination. Steve Bannon is charged. FDA issues an emergency use authorization of convalescent plasma to treat COVID-19. Kellyanne Conway announces she leaves to leave the um, White House and her husband will leave the Lincoln Project. The RNC begins with an in-person roll call in Charlotte, North Carolina. Where's my last page? All right, we're in August right now. TikTok, suing Trump administration. Um, Kyle Rittenhouse, 17, arrested and charged with first degree murder. Jacob Blake, nine vaccine makers say they've signed a joint pledge to uphold high ethical standards. City of Louisville, Kentucky agrees to pay 12 million to Breonna Taylor, uh, her family. Hurricane Sally, the notorious RBG dies. US surpasses 200,000 coronavirus deaths. Trump nominates Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court. First debate between Trump and Biden <laughs> the next day. The Commission on Presidential Debates announces it will be making changes to the format. Um, Trump announces that he and Melania, Melania both tested positive for Corona. Three days later, Trump is released from Walter Reed. Vice presidential debate takes place at University of Utah. I think the uh, fly was the main star of that debate. Um, Governor Whitner, Governor Gretchen Whitmer um, almost kidnapped, 13 people are charged. Second presidential debate is canceled after Trump declined to do a virtual debate. Hurricane Delta, Trump and Biden hold two simultaneous town halls. Second and final presidential debate between Trump and Biden. Uh, U.S. Food and Drug Administration approves rem, remdesivir. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Senate Republicans vote to confirm ACB to the Supreme Court. November 7th, days after the election, uh, seven days Days after the election, uh, CNN projects Biden is elected. Trump refuses to concede. Two days later, Pfizer announces an early look at data from its coronavirus vaccine. Two days. SpaceX craft carrying four astronauts launches into outer space. Moderna announces coronavirus vaccine is 94% effective. Uh, Trump pardons Michael Flynn. Vanderbilt kicker Sarah Fuller, first woman to score in Power Five college football game. Trump announces 26 new pardons. On December 25th, RV explodes on Nashville Second Avenue. Uh, I don't know if we're ever going to know for for sure why that happened. 
And um, just two days ago, Trump signs $2.3 trillion coronavirus relief package. All right, so, and I crossed out a lot of things. I left out a lot. Obviously, um, there were a lot of things that upset a lot of people. That, that didn't even um, talk about all the, the stuff that happened at state levels, all the lockdowns, um, all, all the businesses shut that closed down. I mean, there was so much that happened this year. But I had forgotten about the SpaceX. Um, I had forgotten a lot of that. So I just wanted to go over those things um, real quick. And so then I put a call out for some stories and I asked my Facebook friends um, what things that they had happened to them that were awesome this year. So I'm gonna read a few of the stories, but none of the names. Uh, biggest lessons I learned this year to let God prevail and faith over fear. Working from home allowed me to spend a lot more time working with my horses, which led to moving to a new property last month and now bringing my horses onto my own property. This has been a dream of mine for years and the odd circumstances of 2020 were what it took to make the dream a reality for me. Previously, I had been boarding my horses for years. I also lost my job of 14 years, 14 years earlier this year, but was able to find a new one in about five months. During the time off, I was able to travel to Washington twice for both of my parents' 75th birthdays. So having the time off was a blessing in many ways. The next one, even though it was a tough year for everyone, I too went through a lot besides COVID, had gotten a second DUI last October. Due to COVID, my court date had been postponed three times. Finally got sentenced and had to do 10 days house arrest and two years probation. Separated from my husband and had to move in with my son, trying to make my marriage work. I know this is my fault and things were tough dealing with it all. But this is the important part. Obviously, this woman has gone through a lot but I managed to stay sober through it all. I have 14 months under my belt and taking one day at a time. Never once through this so-called pandemic have I ever thought about drinking. Feel better than ever. I think that's amazing. And then another one, 2020 has been one of the best years of my life and I've had several other people say the same thing. For our family, it was the best year financially and it gave me lots of extra time to reflect and make decisions from a truly authentic place. My business is a Zoom-based biz, even before COVID, which of course helps people be willing to try it out and not use technology as an excuse. But that's one of the things that's been um, a bonus this year is that um, people have had a lot of time at home. They've had a lot of time to work on things that they wouldn't have worked on before. I think a lot of things got accomplished that um, wouldn't have. I mean, we've been focusing so much on all the negatives that happened um, from the lockdowns. Um, but there were also positives for people. And so I want to, you need to always remember that even when things are very difficult, a lot of times when things are very difficult, we're given an added measure of strength, peace, um, uh, an added portion of the spirit. And so I think that's what happened with a lot of people. They were given some strength to deal with difficulties and they were given um, some tender mercies. Here's another one. Although I was eventually laid off after being furloughed for six months, I'm now happily employed at the company I love with better pay and benefits and less stress. Uh, another one, life-changing for me. That's all this lady said, but I know that uh, from watching her Facebook um, feed, she has taken off like a rocket and become a political activist. I've seen a lot of that. Um, interestingly enough, in a lot of females, and I'm not sure why that is, but I've seen a lot of women rally around um, the cause of trying to gain our liberty back from governors who have overreached, trying to help us to not have to wear masks, to get businesses back open. Um, so it's been really interesting to watch people just galvanized into action. It's, it's, um, it's quite inspiring, actually. Another story, I published seven novels this year. It's been a goal of mine for 25 years and it finally happened. Again, someone had some downtime and was able to do something and make good use of it. I think that's amazing. I asked him a question and I said, um, did you, you didn't write all those in this year, did you? He said, no, but he was able to finish them. He hadn't. Um, another lady, 2020 was awesome for me because I let faith overcome fear. In the process, I recognized specific answers to prayers and blessings, married the man promised in those blessings, moved halfway across the country and am now learning, living and loving in Zion. I've seen a lot of people get together. To me, 
the beginning of the year, I had a lot of uh, virtual dates, and so things were happening. And then, I don't know, somewhere around the halfway point, it just <clears throat> my love life took a total nosedive. So that was not one of my bonuses. But I saw a lot of people get married this year. I saw a lot of people meet people this year. So um, there was stuff happening for people. Here's another one. 2020 was amazing for me in many ways. I met Annette. And of course, you know, that's always bonus. I've also expanded the number of friends I spend time with. I have been gainfully employed and I was given the teaching assignments I wanted. I spend less time commuting to work because I work from home. I normally spend 90 minutes a day driving. I have more time to be with family and friends. I think that's really a huge one. A lot of working from home for people that were blessed enough to work from home. And I was one of those, even though I griped a lot about um, having to homeschool. Being able to work from home um, all year has been a blessing because I didn't have the uh, the problems that a lot of people had with trying to, to work during this time outside of home. Um, another story, I fixed issues I buried my whole life. It was a life-changing year for our nation, but for me personally, I started working, oh, for, but for me personally, um, 2020 was awesome for me with new opportunities I found. Okay, I'm trying not to confuse stories here. I don't think, I think this is the same one. Yeah, okay. I left my job in special education to volunteer with the, oh no, that's a different story. Sorry, I think this one ended with, um, it was a life-changing year for our nation, but for me personally, either I cut it off or that was the end of it. Anyway. Um, another one, I started working from home, best commute and dress standards ever, and I was blessed to keep my job while so many others lost theirs. Discovering my own same person, I discovered my own chutzpah in defying authority and lunatic restrictions. I had the same um, kind of interesting thing happen uh, because of my podcast. Obviously, I did a lot of speaking out against um, a lot of the unconstitutional measures. Also, though, I found myself... Um, being uh, civilly disobedient to quite a few because it was just so obvious that some of these measures were ridiculous, like locking down playgrounds, <laughs> I mean, especially at the beginning, just so many dumb things. Um, having to wear masks or being told to wear masks everywhere. I kept, uh, I stopped, I wasn't wearing them until the stores started requiring it um, because when it was just a suggestion, no. Okay, and this story goes on. Hearing the president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints specifically address preparation for the second coming. It gives meaning to all the tribulations we're going through and going to go through. 2020 seems to me like one of those chocolate sampler box boxes confectioners make. A little bit of each candy the company makes. We had a little famine, a little pestilence, a little adverse weather, a little civil unrest, a little economic recession, a little plague, a little earthquake. This year is the practice run for the real deal. I also friended a lot of strangers on social media, including you, Annette. So, of course, again, he's happy about that. I want to mention, though, that I agree that this year was a practice run. Um, I did an episode on the second coming earlier in the year that you might want to go back and listen to um, and then go listen to Jody Stoddard's second coming video. It's like two and a half hours or something. It's really long, but uh, really eye opening. Obviously, she's just making guesses, but. It makes sense to me that uh, 2020 would be um, a foreshadowing, a warning, uh, a practice run for the real troubles that are probably coming in the next few years. So, um, and just so you know, I already did an uh, episode on preparation for national uh, natural disasters, or actually any disasters, it could be man-made as well. And I'm going to be airing that in a week. And um, after doing that episode, I realized that I needed to do at least a few more. So that's going to be a theme um, for this podcast this year. Not doing it every week because we're going to have some fun too. But I'm going to be doing um, episodes to help us prepare for more stuff that could be coming. That is coming. We know it's coming. We're in the last days. So we need to get prepared spiritually, physically, financially, mentally. And I'm going to help with that. So anyway, um, okay, next Story. I had lots of work. People did home remodels in their new spare time. Yeah, I know lots of people are working on um, home projects. The construction folks are, are rolling in it. So some industries are doing really well. Uh, met my sweetheart, not married yet, but it's looking good. And I've been following this friend. I think he's probably right. I wouldn't, I would be shocked if there wasn't an engagement announcement soon. 
Uh, next story. I started getting therapy in May of this year. Therapy had been a long time coming and very much needed. I've been getting therapy prior to now, but the technique that is being used to help me is called brain spotting. It reduces or eliminates trauma by neutralizing the emotion or at least making it less traumatic. It's not a perfect science, but I have noticed things that don't bother me like they have before. It has been very helpful and awesome. If you have heard of EMDR, it's a similar idea to that. I have heard of EMDR and I've heard it's really good. I had not heard of brain spotting. They both sound interesting, so I'm glad for this friend. Next story, I and my business were featured on Good Morning America and gifted $10,000 from Scotch Brand. They've been on a mission to help small business owners during the pandemic. I think that's awesome as well. It's really great to see the people that have stepped up to help those in need. That's another one of the awesome byproducts. When things are really difficult, there is an opportunity for people to step up and serve. And as we all know that service is one of those joy producing activities. And so if you haven't had a chance to get out there and serve, I highly recommend it. Um, okay, so here's another story. 2020 was awesome for me with the new opportunities I found. I left my job in special education to volunteer with a political campaign in Salt Lake County. I worked in a paid position with, uh, I won't mention the name, for Salt Lake County Mayor campaign as a canvasser. I was actually able to be outside to do what I enjoy most. I was able to walk neighborhoods and talk with voters. It is strange to say this, but I did not get sick even once in 2020. I am healthier and happier than I could ever have been in my life. I think I even have a future in politics. I think that's awesome. You know, it's funny. I think I was actually healthier in 2020 um, than I have been in previous years as well. Maybe in part because I've been very um, diligent about taking vitamins, especially C and D. And uh, maybe all the hand washing. I don't know. But um, it, I can tell you it's not from mask wearing because I only wear it when I absolutely have to. But um, uh, anyway... All right, and the next one, I got married. That was pretty much the only thing that good thing that came out of 2020 for me. And my response was, that's a pretty big thing. I'm actually kind of grateful that I didn't find, uh, I wanted to find my guy this during, during this time because I think um, it's a really good time to find out what someone's made of, um, how they handle difficult times. Are they gritty? Are they faithful? Um, are they not fearful? Uh, do they still advocate for freedom? It would have been nice to find that, but I think I'm going to have plenty more hard times to see what someone's made of in 2021. I was grateful not to get married this year because I really did not want to do some little piddly um, wedding because you could only have a few people there. All right, last one. Um, it was amazing for me because my wife and I brought a little, a beautiful little girl home three weeks after COVID shut down Anchorage the first time. She truly has been the joy that's kept us through this year. Oh, and Mandalorian season two. I'm really glad he mentioned that. I have to say Mandalorian season two was one of the highlights of the year for me, especially the last episode. If you haven't seen it, you've got to. Watch, I recommend both seasons. I actually like season two, I think better than season one. And the last episode was amazing. I cried, it was great. <laughs> anyway. Um, and I wanted to share my own personal story at the end of this, because yes, it was the worst of times, but also in some ways it was the best of times. And again, often those two go together. Um, for me, I remember when it first, when we first shut down and I was teaching gospel doctrine for my ward. And for those of you that are not LDS, that's Sunday school teacher. And I really enjoyed doing that. It was, it's been my favorite calling. And we were teaching, um, we were studying the Book of Mormon this year. <laughs> it was so funny. I remember going in at the beginning of the year in January and I was like, hey class, it's 2020. It's gonna be such a great year. Last year, I looked forward to 2020 so much because 2020, how awesome is that? You only see that usually uh, once in your lifetime. Yeah, um, nobody in 1919 is around for 2020. But anyway, um, or probably not. Anyway, 2020, I thought it's gonna be so awesome. And so I was so excited. We're, we're studying the Book of Mormon, it's 2020. Little did I know what would happen. But anyway, I remember in, in March when um, everything shut down and church shut down and they said, there, and, and I was sitting there, I was sitting on the edge of my tub in my bathroom, I don't know what I was doing, but I was thinking and I said, man, I'm so bummed that I'm not gonna teach gospel doctrine 
for a while. And immediately the spirit told me, yes, yes, you are. You're just going to teach it on Facebook instead. And I was like, what? So I, I, I offered to my bishop to teach um, gospel doctrine on Zoom somehow to our ward, and he never took me up on that. And so I, but I felt really inspired to go and start teaching it on Facebook Live. And so I was doing that every single week, and I'm used to teaching every other week. And so, and then I had to learn the, the Facebook Live, um, and there were glitches, I had so many glitches. But every week I was studying the Book of Mormon like I've never studied it before. And so I was, I had so much spirituality I think I taught, I want to say, 15 or 16 weeks straight, um, except for maybe uh, during conference. And um, every week, it was when I got on to teach, the spirit was so strong. It was amazing. Who would have thought that sitting here in front of a, um, a computer all by myself, talking into a microphone, and only looking at myself, that I could feel the spirit so strongly? But it was. Every week, it was so strong. And I had all these people logging in, and I would ask questions, and they would comment um, in the in the chat. And I think I was mostly reaching singles. There were some members of my ward. I was mostly reaching singles like me, who were at home and not able to, to go to church, and many of them alone. And so I felt like I was meeting a need, and I had so many people thanking me for it. But I was spiritually enriched in a way, and I don't know if it's this was the time for me, in my life for me to gain an even greater testimony of the Book of Mormon, or if that was Heavenly Father's way of helping me to get through 2020, because he knew how difficult it would be for me to watch our freedoms contract so greatly. But at the same time as I was watching that happen, I was gaining such a strong testimony of the Book of Mormon, and I was able to help week after week by serving people who didn't have any church at all. Because um, for a long time, nothing was happening until um, people finally got it together and started having Zoom church and stuff. So, um, and then eventually I, I picked up a few other people that were teaching it on other weeks. So I wasn't teaching every week, but that to me was amazing. Also because people that weren't members of the church were also logging in and watching or former members were watching. And I, it, it was just a really great experience. So there was that, and there were some other um, spiritual experiences that I had during the year. And also, I did have a lot of bonding time with my girls because I was home with them quite a bit. So I just wanted to end on that note. 2020 was a dumpster fire, but in a lot of ways, it was also awesome. And so that gives me hope because we know 2021 is going to be uniquely difficult as well. Politically, uh, in a lot of ways, the 2020 has set 2021 up to be challenging. So... We know that it's going to be difficult, but we also know from 2020 that with difficulties, if we're looking for it, we're also going to see miracles and a lot of tender mercies. So um, I hope that you'll keep listening because I'm going to try and uh, um, do episodes on things that are going to help us get through 2021, um, on how to receive more personal revelation. I'm hoping to get some comedians on and have some funny episodes um, also, those preparation episodes, I have a, a, a gunsmith that says he wants to come on and, and help me t um, share how to get guns and ammo during tough times. That could be really important. So I'm, I'm hopeful that we can make the best of 2021, just like so many of us did with 2020. So thank you for listening um, this year. And for those of you that are new, welcome aboard. Please share this podcast, um, either through YouTube or Facebook or other ways. Um, I would love to really increase my listenership in 2021. I want to help you. I want to help you all as I'm helping myself. So thank you for listening to Annette on Life, Liberty, and Happiness, where freedom lovers gather. This podcast can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, YouTube.com forward slash Annette Talks. Goodbye and goodbye to 2020.